Now we're going to do is show you how to do some basics on quantifying bacteria. So there's a couple ways we're going to do it. We're going to use a spectrophotometer and we're going to take the sample and make serial dilutions and plate them out onto serial diluted plates um, and show you how to make dilutions for those. Okay, this would be something you're going to be doing when you do your growth curve, for example. First things first, we've got this lovely sample. It's full of bacteria. It's nice and turbid, meaning that it's very cloudy. We want to know who's in there. How are you going to find out how many cells are in there? If you just plate this out directly onto a plate, you're just going to get what's called a lawn. All kinds of bacteria, um, but you're not going to be able to count them. You want to count individual colonies. Okay? So what do you do? You've got to make a serial dilution of these, which means 1 to 10 dilutions of this. And you can do that any way you want. You could take one milliliter of this and put it into nine mils of uh, media or buffer, sterile buffer. Um, shake it up, that's a one to 10 dilution. Then you could take one mil of that, put it into another test tube that has nine mils in it. Okay, that's gonna be a one to 10 of a one to 10, which means oh, now it's a one to 100. So we're gonna go through and show you how that's done. So I've got a bunch of pre-labeled little Eppendorf tubes. We're going to use um, 1,000 microliters instead of one mil. I've got my diluent, okay? And I got my plates already laid out, and they're labeled 10 to the minus one, which is one to 100, or one to 10, I'm sorry. 10 to the minus two, one to 100, one to 1,000, one to 10,000, et cetera, okay? Um, now, so the biggest problem is how do you make the dilutions themselves? Well, I take one of these guys, and you know how to use these, I hope. I'm going to set this to 900 microliters. Okay. And um, attempt to find some tips. It's one thing I did. Ooh, Dr. Yasuda has some on his bench. I'll steal some from him. Oh, wait. Oh, I've got some here. Lucky for Dr. Yasuda. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is put 900 microliters in each of these little guys. And then we're going to take what volume of this to put into our first 1 to 10 tube to make this a 1 to 10. 900 microliters plus what is going to make a 1 to 10? So I'll let you think about that while we do this. You take your 900, you take your diluent, sterile buffer, it could be media, it could even be water sometimes. Water's not the best choice just because it'll hurt the cell sometimes. And you just go ahead and put 900 microliters in there. Now I'm being very careful, so I'm going to use the same tip. Go through and put 900 in the next one. And so forth and so on. So I'm going to do that and then we'll come back. Hopefully you thought about it a little while during that, that great interim and you decided that I would want to use 100 microliters of my sample diluted into 900 of buffer to give a total of 1,000 microliters or a one volume to a total of 10. So 100 of your sample into 900 of your buffer, that's a 1 to 10 dilution. Got us some of these guys. We go ahead and we take our sample and we put it in to our 1 to 10 tube. And we pipette up and down, get rid of the excess. Put your tip into a biohazard bag. Shake it up two or three times. Now this is mixed, this is a one to 10 dilution, okay? But now we wanna make a serial dilution of that. So we take another tip. We take 100 microliters this time from here. 
and put it into the 10 to the minus 2, or the 1 to 100 tube. I pet it a few times like before. Get rid of the tip, shake it up down a little bit. And you do this until you have all of your dilutions set up. So we'll come back when that's done. Made your dilutions. Now you need to, um, once those dilutions are made, you need to now plate these in volumes onto your plates and spread them out to count colonies. Okay. So what do you do? You take your hundred, you take, now you take a hundred microliters from your dilutions. This one's minus sixth. So this has been shaken up and diluted, it's ready to go. Pop it onto my plate, my 10 to the minus 6 plate, right in the center. Now you take a hockey stick. Now, a hockey stick you can actually buy, or you can take a nice, long, skinny pasture pipette, which is what I do. I melt the tip. I blow in the end to make sure it's sealed. Yeah, it's sealed. And then I take this thing and I just put it in the flame like this for a few seconds and it bends down and now you've got yourself what's called a hockey stick, okay? Now, you've got your cell cells in a little volume in there. You want to spread them out on the plate. To sterilize this, you just take a little ethanol, pass this through the flame just like that, let it, let it burn off, touch the auger surface, and then put right your, your hockey stick right into your 100 microliters of cells, and you just spread it out as best you can. Then you take your hockey stick, you flame it again, and it's ready for the next time. Okay? You set these plates, and you let them dry right side up for probably 10 minutes, because you don't want to now turn these over immediately, because as you do that, things will run down the surface, and you'll get colonies that get squished together, and we're gonna go over to the board and show you why it's important not to have that happen. Okay? But anyway, I'm gonna let these sort of dry for a second. One point of um, worry, and this happens every quarter, in fact, some students do it on purpose, I'm not sure why, you'll be working with alcohol, and you'll be working with a flame, and you'll be working with your hockey stick, and you'll take your ethanol, and you'll flame it, and you'll accidentally light your whole thing on fire. Okay. Whatever shall we do? You take, you don't panic, but you take something large and just cover it. That's all you got to do. Let it sit there for a few seconds. Smother out the oxygen. Bam, you're fine. Other than a little bit of smell of some melted plastic from the petri dish I used, I use a glass one. It'd be better. But if that happens to you. Whatever you do, don't try to pick the thing up. Don't try to squirt water on it. Don't move it somewhere. Just calmly say to somebody, a uh, little help, please. And we'll find a container and we'll just put it over top and stop it from exploding, okay? There's no reason, there's no reason to panic. Let's um, go ahead and incubate these things and uh, we will see what we come up with.